Hi there, I wanted to come and talk to you about a thought that popped into my mind today. The question that I am about to ask you deals with something that trips up many people after they repent of their sins and receive salvation in Jesus Christ. Many today are not sure what comes next. So I want to ask you, if repentance and salvation are the beginning, what comes next for you as a Christian? Before we go any further, leave me a comment below and tell me what you think comes after salvation. This question, I think the church and anyone who leads someone to Jesus needs to be prepared to know the answer to. I think because so many do not know the answer to this question, we have a lot of people who believe that they are Christians and they are not. Now that may sound a little harsh, but hear me out. If people today think that all you have to do to be a Christian is ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins through a prayer and then they are right with the Lord, they are fooling themselves. I believe what comes after repentance and salvation is sanctification. We must get in the word of God and spend time with our Heavenly Father learning to hear his voice and know his heart. We must have an intimate relationship with him. You see, God wants us to love him. And if we love him, we will keep his commandments, not because we are of the law, but because we love him. Listen to what Jesus said in John chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. If ye love me, Keep my commandments and I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. And let's go just a little bit further and listen to a question that Jesus was asked and how he answered it. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. Jesus tells him, If we love him, we will keep his words, and the Father of heaven will love us. And by us keeping the words of Jesus, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit will come to live inside of us. So let me ask you this. How can we keep the words of Jesus if we do not know them? And how can we truly follow Jesus if we do not love him enough to get to know him? Over the years, I have ran into so many people who profess Christ, and you can tell that they do not know him. They have no conviction in their life when it comes to sin, breaking the commandments, how they treat people, their language, and so on and so forth. And how can this be? We have to wake up and stop letting ourselves be deceived. Going to church doesn't make you a follower of Jesus Christ. It just makes you a pew warmer. We must not have religion, but relationship with Jesus. This is the only way that we can be fully persuaded and have the faith that we need to follow him. 
The words of Jesus can be scary because he tells us that he is the only way, the truth, and the life. And then Jesus tells us that the way is narrow and few find it. Jesus also tells us that many will say to him one day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy and do all these works in your name? And he will tell them, depart from me. I never knew you. And I do not want Jesus to say that to me or to you. And that is why I am sharing this message with you today. So please check your heart. Please ask the Lord to search you and to get rid of anything that is not of him. If you got saved and no one told you the things that I am telling you today, make the choice to learn who Jesus is. That is the only way he can truly be the Lord of our lives. It is love that compels us to change. It is love that gives us the ability to lay everything in our lives at the feet of Jesus. And that is why Jesus told us the greatest commandment is love. So I challenge you today, love God, really love him more than anything else in your life and see how you will be truly changed. You will never be the same when we love God above our spouse and children and friends and family. Then we start to understand the plan of love. You see, when you love God more than anything in your life, then you can hand everything over to him. When we give God our children and trust him to be with them everywhere they go and trust him to protect them, then we truly experience the gift of love. Love is so powerful and it is the only thing that conquered death. The love of God is more powerful than anything and nothing can stop it. Jesus gave all of himself. He poured himself out on the cross for our sins. And we must love God with all that we are because this is the only way that God can use our lives. I feel in my spirit that God is asking you, do you love me? Do you truly love me enough to give me all of you? Your spouse, your children, your career, your money. Do you love me? Only you can answer this question and I hope that you will search your heart and make sure that you are truly loving God and making him the Lord over every part of your heart and your life. You know, Jesus asked Peter this question. Let's read it together in John chapter 21 verses 15 through 17. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, Lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, Thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thine hands, and another shall girt thee, and carry thee whether thou wouldest not. This spake he signifying, by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? After he asked him three times, Jesus then tells him what kind of death he would face and told him, follow me. We know that Peter followed Jesus and he was put to death for it. To truly follow Jesus means that we love him above our own life. It is a lifetime commitment, not just a one-time prayer and a once-a-week service. It is a daily devotion to God. 
So as I end this video today, let me ask you again, do you love God? I mean, love him the way that Peter and the disciples did, willing to give it all to God and hold on to nothing. Until next time, take care and stay in the word.